What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Down in the country, having to do some work here. I'm at the Hotel Motel Holiday Inn, and uh, I'll be back home tomorrow. And I found out the hard way. I didn't realize that tomorrow night I'm supposed to be doing a preview um, for Cowboys versus Washington Commanders because I forgot we play them this week. This is Washington Dallas Hell Week. And so far, this is nothing like what it used to be when I grew up because back in the day, it was a heated rivalry. Right now, there's not much fight in Washington land right now. I was, um, I got a text from Rio that said, uh, 7.45 tomorrow night. I was like, 7.45 tomorrow night for what? He's like, for our live stream. I said, what live stream? He said, preview, Washington, Dallas. I was like, oh, okay. I, I, I didn't realize we were doing that. I said, I should be home in time. So I, I ended up saying, how do you feel about this game? He said, we going to see. My next thing was, uh, will Wentz get out alive? No expectations on our end, but it's a must win for us. I hope so. I hope you kill him. I was like, you want him dead? Nah, I want him to earn his effing money and best Cooper Rush. Not trying to see any sorry ass Heineke. So there is no joy in Washington right now. They are not feeling good about that move for Carson Wentz. I guess in some regards, they're wishing that they had gotten Jimmy G uh, after all. But anyway, be that as it may, that's not my issue. We got lucky with uh, Cooper Rush, who was not wanted by the by, by the uh, Giants and was brought back by the Cowboys. And, you know, understanding the system that he's playing in with better play calling has done really well. So I want to have a personal personal conversation let me get, get a little closer i want to have a personal conversation with you guys personal meaning personnel i am dyslexic i'm an idiot i'm the guy who got a jersey that said personal and i was actually ashamed of it when i found out how stupid i was to misspell it but the funny thing is is i've worn that jersey two weeks in a row and it's been very personal to me. And the Cowboys have won. And being that I am superstitious, I, I know, I know. I know it's hard to believe that me, a guy with a voodoo doll, is very superstitious. But it's only weird if it doesn't work. So back to the personal personnel. If you've been watching the Joe Boo Sports Report for any length of time, like the summer and things, I have dissected what happened to us over and over again to the 49ers. Our offensive line was not anywhere as good as it had been the beginning of the year. Um, the running game, we ran for 77 yards, and I think 28 of that was Dak Prescott running for his life. Um, we had a ton of penalties. And we didn't do 12 personnel. And if you have not, if you have literally been under a rock or on another planet and just fell to earth, let me explain to you what 12 personnel is. 12 personnel, the second number is tight ends. The first number is running backs. So if you say 12 personnel, that's one running back and two tight ends. You say 21 personnel, that's two running backs and one tight end. If you were to say 22 personnel, it would be two running backs and two tight ends. Well, in the first game we played Tampa Bay, we threw the ball 42 times, ran the ball 18 of our 60 plays. We had Jake Ferguson, not Jake from State Farm, but Jake Ferguson in for a total of 11 plays. So at maximum, we ran two tight ends, 11 plays. Now, I've been working with Brother Roz, and we've been trying to find a breakdown of exactly how many plays were 12 personnel, but we can't seem to find where they've broken down groupings, and we're working on that. What we may have to do is actually go back through and watch the film to figure it out. Now, understand that last night, Dalton Schultz was not active. But here's an interesting thing. It may have been a great move by Jerry Jones and crew to not do a long-term contract with Dalton Schultz. You know, this is one of those cold businesses, quite honestly. But 
with them signing him to uh, the franchise tag, $11.5 million is not a mo- lot of money right now for tight ends. In fact, the tight end compensation is much, much higher. In fact, next year, if they were to franchise tag him again, it would only be like $13 million, which is still way below the market value. But you got a taste last night of where we are with tight ends. And when you think about it, just a couple of years ago, we had old Jason Witten and really nobody. We were kind of in the tight end desert. But last night, you had Peyton Hendershot, Jake Ferguson, and uh, McKinnon playing. Now, I don't have the exact number of times we had two tight ends in there, but I can tell you that it was pretty close to at least 50% minimum. Because shout out to Brother Rods and Pro Football Focus. You know the boys, you know the boys at Pro Football Focus. They watch a lot of football. And um, I'm going to tell you that Brother Ross, Ross ends up going through a lot of that data. And shout out to him for doing that because he makes my life a lot easier. But now check this out. So we have no Dalton Schultz last night, which has been actually one of the quarterback's favorites, right? We ended up last night with. Peyton Hendershot having three receptions for 43 yards. That's a 14.3 yards per reception. That's pretty good. We also had Jake, not from State Farm, but Jake Ferguson, who had two catches for 13 yards. So you put that together, it's 56 yards. Okay, it's not it's not huge. But for two guys that are rookies, one of which was an undrafted rookie free agent, Stepping in for Dalton Schultz, a guy who's been there, that's not bad at all. And that helped us out. But here's the other part that's interesting. When we look at the numbers and plays, okay, um, Jake Ferguson was in for 53 plays. We had a total of 61. So that means there was only eight plays, eight plays of all of our plays that he was not in on, right? You follow me, right? We had Hendershot in for 38 plays. Okay? So worst case is we could say that maybe the eight plays that Ferguson was not in on, that Hendershot was in, right? So if we take um, thir- eight from 38, that means 30 plays. At least 30 plays. At least that him and Jake Ferguson were on the field together. Friends, that's 12 personnel. But wait, there's more. McKinnon was also in on 11 plays, in which case he was blocking nine of those. So I don't think McKinnon was in on any plays by himself. I don't think he was. But um, you have to look at this and say, Even at 30 plays, we had 61. It's right there at 50%. Now, here's the thing that's that's interesting about this. Again, we only had 11 plays with 12 personnel in the Tampa Bay game. But what I want you to understand is, is this. Major differences. Because you had 12 personnel, Cooper Rush was only rushed or pressured six times in the game. With the extra tight ends in there, they were able to stop the rush. They were able to block, you know, have an extra man blocking there and being able to block downfield. And they were also able to go out the routes. So I know five catches for 58 yards doesn't seem like a lot. But when you're able to have C.D. Lamb with eight catches, Noah Brown with five catches, uh, Peyton Hendershot with three, Jake Ferguson with two, Semi with one, Jalen Tolbert with one, Zeke Elliott with one. When you're able to distribute that ball over the field, it's easier for the quarterback because there's not one guy to key on. After a while, they started focusing in on Noah Brown. As they focused in on Noah Brown, that started leaving C.D. Lamb open. Okay, second part of this. The Cowboys ran the hell out of the football with the 12 personnel. Tony Pollard, 105 yards, 8.1 yards a carry. Now keep in mind, 40 of that was one play where Jason Peters was in there and got his big fat behind, wheeled around um, to go ahead and block off the defender, which busted that, that thing wide open. 
Zeke Elliott, for all those out there that think Zeke Elliott is done, 15 carries, 73 yards at 4.9 yards a carry, and a touchdown. Guys, Cooper Rush only had to throw the ball 31 times, but was efficient with 215 yards, one TD, no interceptions. That, my friends, is the way you win football. It's not sexy. It's not the three three wideouts or the five wideouts and things like that and slinging the rock, you know, with the gunslinger. But that, my friends, is efficient football. That is protecting your quarterback. That is establishing the run and being able to play action. Oh, mind you, mind you, when you're able to run the football like the Cowboys were, the Giants are so worried about stopping the run That's when play action comes in. To explain what play action is, is basically you are trying to make it look like it is a run. The quarterback's going like he's going to hand the football off, and he pulls the ball away. Sometimes he just goes ahead and turns around, boom, quick hitter. Other times they bootleg, which means they're moving the pocket. And when you move the pocket and you're not a stationary target all the time, you're going to make the defensive lineman be honest and try and look around to see is he going to be over there or is he going to be over there because if I'm running over here and he's over there then this is going to go all the way and mind you here's the crazy thing in play action pass completions Cooper Rush had nine completions for over 158 yards 158 yards of his 215 were done on play action this my friend is what you want to do. And this is the reason why you run 12 personnel. And fortunately, we've got some young studs that are only going to get better at tight end. And if they can develop Hendershot as well as Jake Ferguson and mix in, of course, you know Dalton Schultz, all of a sudden you're looking at something that could be similar to what the New England Patriots used to have uh, back in the day with Gronk and Hernandez. And the two of those guys were deadly for defenses they didn't have great wide receivers but they had some great tight ends that literally were feasting all right good people i'm going to get back to of course game time and prime time and get this thing uploaded i'm hoping in a couple hours that i'm going to be talking to cowboys crunk right now he's officiating a game but i want to talk to him about some of this officiating that we've been seeing here uh this year it's been ass and as always i appreciate you guys